This video demonstrates how to use the OES WebAlarm product for displaying real-time and historical alarms in a web application. At its core, WebAlarm uses the WebHMI product and as such benefits from its open architecture and communications model. WebHMI is built upon open web standards and is platform agnostic. This means that you can use any web development tools and integrate WebHMI into any web platform such as ASP.NET, .NET MVC, JSP, PHP, Ruby on Rails, and others. If your web application can generate HTML and serve up JavaScript, WebHMI will work with it. This model of providing open development tools allows you to decide how best to incorporate OAS products into your environment. It also eases the pain of integration by working with what you already have instead of dictating a major platform shift for any single application. And if you're like most developers, more than one platform is already being used in your organization. So having tools that work with all of them is valuable. Using open standards means that there's tons of community support for all the underlying technologies, and a large group of developers able to hit the ground running with our tools. WebHMI also utilizes a direct line of communication between the client and OAS server. Once the web page is loaded, the client taps into real-time OAS data without putting additional strain on your web application server. This configuration also allows you to get started with little more than a text editor and a network connection, which is exactly what we'll be doing in this demo. So what you see on screen now is an example of the WebAlarm product placed on a web page, and it's streaming out the alarm data coming from the OAS server. This is the default display, and you can customize this so that you can choose which columns you want to show, which fields of the alarms you want to show, as well as some of the features. For example, there's the alarm history fields that allow you to switch between real-time mode and historical mode, and there's also a search field at the top that allows you to filter quickly from the user interface which alarms are displayed without affecting the streaming data coming to the browser. So let's get started with setting up the server and then getting into some code. So our first step is going to be registering a listener on the, the server side. So this is done by opening up the service control utility and what you'll see there is the HTML HMI registration. Before you do anything, stop all of the services. And once they're all stopped, we're going to go down to the HTML HMI registration section and just click on register. You can use the defaults for now, but in the future you can change the host name and port number. Once the registration succeeds, you can start all the services back up again. To begin writing code, our first step is going to go into the Open Automation Software installation. So you're going to go to opcsystems.net and then go to the HTML HMI folder and we're going to copy a whole bunch of files and folders. This is the alarm example as well as all of the folders for JavaScript, images, fonts, and CSS. We're going to put those in a new folder on our desktop. So we'll create a folder called Alarm Demo. We'll copy in all of those folders in the alarm example. And we can open up the alarm example in our browser first to see it run. And as long as your server is set up correctly, you'll see the alarm data streaming in just like I showed previously. Web Alarm is fully interactive, so you can even double click on any of the alarms to acknowledge them. That sends a signal up to the server to mark them as acknowledged. And by default, the delete column is enabled so that you can just click on the X to delete an alarm and next to it there's a comment column so that you can click on that and add a comment on an alarm. So now that we've seen it in action, let's open up the source code and see how it all works. So open up the alarm example HTML in our text editor just using Sublime Text which is a pretty popular editor that does syntax highlighting. And you'll see we've got an OPC config object in script that controls how all of this works. We include some of the same libraries that we do for the Web HMI product, so we've got the OPC libmin, jQuery. We've got some other things in here as well, like the data tables library, which controls the, the display of a data grid. We also have the OPC alarm style, which will allow you to customize the display. By default, we've got some coloring for all the different types of alarms and their statuses, but you can customize this by editing that, which we'll show later. And in the OPC config, you'll see that we've got an alarm ID on one of these alarm bindings. And that corresponds to the element on the screen that is going to be displaying the alarm. First thing we want to show is how we can add filters. By default, 
all of the alarms that are on the server are going to be displayed, but we can add filters so that we can limit what gets displayed within this specific alarm. The first filter is going to be alarm groups. These are configurable on the server, so you can have some alarms going into different alarm groups, and we'll choose values. So now we're just going to be displaying the values alarm group. And because this is an array, you can add multiple alarm groups so that you can display multiple alarm groups within that same alarm control. You can also filter by alarm type. In this case, we're going to only show the high and the high high alarms. We'll refresh and now we'll see that along with the values alarm groups, we'll only display the high and high high alarms. So now I'm going to open up the alarm configuration so that we can add another type of alarm group and we'll add that to our filter. When I select configure tags, we'll select the local host and I'm going to select the random tag and I'm going to add these alarms on that tag to the random alarm group. And I'm going to do that for all of the, the random tags alarms, including high, 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 low, 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 enabling them as I go. Apply the changes and what this will do is whenever these values exceed the thresholds defined in each of these alarms, it will add those alarms to the random alarm group. So if you want these alarms to display, we'll go back to the source code. So now we'll remove all the filters and we'll see that the random alarms are coming through. And we'll add the filter back in so that we will display just the random alarm group. As I mentioned before, we have a default set of styles on the alarms. If you want to change these styles to match your website or to match your application, you can go into the OPC alarm style CSS file and select all the different styles depending on the type of alarm it is, the status of it, and even what colors these alarms display based on whether the, the cursor is hovering over them. Let's go down to the section that says alarm styles and you can see that We've got different styles for each different status, for example, active, active, and act, and so on. So if you're familiar with CSS, you can go in and modify these colors to suit your needs. We'll change these to turn them into kind of a blue theme for these active alarms. So now when we refresh, you'll see that the alarms that are active are no longer red. They're, they're kind of a bluish purple. And you can modify these styles for each type of alarm that you've got based on its status. Also by default, the alarm control displays all of the available columns. You can choose which columns you want by including in the OPC config alarm binding a columns array. Once you do this, you're taking over the display of the, the alarm control. So you'll need to include all the columns, including the alarm ID and all of the attributes on each one. And they display in the order that you put them in. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is limit to the alarm ID, the alarm date and time, the active status, the value of the alarm, and the text. And you'll see in these attributes, there are things like visible, whether they show up on the grid or not, the width of them, the alignment, the text alignment, the type that's being displayed, and so on. So I'll refresh, and now you see that we've only got the date and time, the active flag, the value, and the text. So these are just a few features of the Web Alarm product. If you'd like more information about how you can customize it and include it in your application, go to openautomationsoftware.com and go to our knowledge base and select the Web Alarm product for more details.